What is going on, people? Markets are crashing overnight. Um, we're going to talk about these charts, and it's just going to be an update to the video I posted the other day on my Substack because this really isn't that shocking, and I'm going to tell you why uh, this dip is probably viable this morning. Uh, overnight, we have all this panic coming out of Japan. Japan raised rates. Warren Buffett sold Apple. The world is ending, but the reality is this is nothing but just a textbook move down to the 200 day. Now, this morning we're sitting at 430.62 right now on the queues. The uh, 200 day is 429.56, and we have not been at the 200 day since October of 2023, way back here, right? And the 200 day has been sloping up. And this is a pretty, you know, this is just textbook. You're just moving down to the 200. Now, if we break the 200, then we've got issues, but we haven't done that yet. So I'm not going to discuss that because that is not something to talk about because there should be a really heavy defense this morning at the 200 day. There always is. This isn't uh, a normal thing where the queues hit the 200 day. So I, I would expect a big wave of buying this morning. The VIX is 40, it's up 70% today. Literally the VIX quadrupled uh, in a couple sessions. The VIX was 10 uh, a couple days back. And so this level of panic, uh, this is kind of almost COVID level panic during COVID, the VIX hit 80. But you gotta remember as the VIX goes, the panic goes and um, options are repriced on that and so a day like today is actually a really great day to sell puts uh, because the IV is incredibly elevated and you know it'll it'll drain as the VIX comes out. The VIX isn't going to stay 40 forever. Actually, usually when stocks uh, are a buy is when the VIX is over 30. So a move to 40 is pretty rare. I, I'm pretty sure we haven't done this actually in a long time because even during 2022, I, I don't really remember a 40 VIX. We might have, but I, I don't really remember it. Uh, I remember like high 30s, like 36 or something. But I, this morning we're just under 40. Now, again, I discussed this in the video the other day. This really, like, God, the people on Twitter that talk about charts just annoy me so much. They are just so ignorant of how markets work. Uh, you have a lot of smart people and they're incredibly ignorant. Again, you see this massive uptrend the queues were in, right? From April all the way till June when it broke. When that uptrend broke, literally nothing good has happened since, right? And that uptrend broke two sessions after the 21 EMA broke. This is not, like, people make markets out to be something they're not. They're, they're literally just trading instruments. That's it. All the stuff about fundamentals, all that stuff, it's irrelevant. Stocks have been up and to the right for like 200 years. Pull up a long-term chart, like literally stocks have gone straight up for 200 years. They're not gonna go up in a straight line. This isn't real estate. They don't just go straight up like, oh my God, they move up and down, they, they gyrate, wow. Like people have the worst takes on Twitter. Literally, the, like the, it, it's just really annoying. I, I actually, I, I don't even know if I'm gonna go on Twitter anymore. These people are just, Nobody knows what they're talking about, but everybody wants to give their input. Like, I don't, I don't care how smart and successful you are at whatever field you're in. When it comes to stocks, you're an ignoramus if uh, you think charts don't show what's going on. Because look at this. From the moment we broke the 21 EMA, we literally never recovered it once on the queues. Okay? And so you have to think about how do markets work, okay? And markets are a series of computers, okay? And these computers are all trading back and forth all day long, right? These algos everybody talks about. And they're programmed to whatever people want. And how do you program your algo? Well, I mean, very simply, everybody's got different levels, but these are basic things. That's why they exist. That's why you can pull up the 8 EMA. That's why you can pull up the 21 EMA. These things don't trade on the PE ratio of the Qs. That's not, that's not what they trade on. And so literally they've been, you know, when you're in an uptrend, right? You can push it and that's what I always tell you. And when the uptrend breaks, all you gotta do is get out of the way. It's really not that hard. Like if you sold the Qs right here, you would have sold the Qs at 482. Well, it's 430.96 this morning. So uh, you would have done pretty well. Now, the problem is, as I said in the video I posted over the weekend, most of us are adults. 
And most of us have more than $2,000 in our trading account. And we can't make taxable moves just to uh, do this stuff. So what do you do? You sell covered calls, you buy puts, but you can't just create this massive taxable event just to move out of the queues every few months when the, when the trend breaks. Because this is gonna happen multiple times a year, right? Like you're gonna break up trends, you're gonna have to get out of the way. But the reality is uh, if you're trading, you push it in uptrends because uptrends are uptrends and downtrends are downtrends. And this, this really is significantly less complicated than people make it out to be. Um, charts have been telling you for weeks to not buy tech. Literally, the video I posted a couple weeks back, it said tech stocks are done. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to link it at the end of this. This is not as complex as people make it out to be. Uh, Stocks will be higher in, uh, I don't know, six months or something. Is this the Japan carry trade unwinding? Is it Buffett? Is it whatever? The, the why does not matter. That, that's what people don't get. The why is of no importance. The only thing that's important is you were told to sell tech weeks back. Weeks. And the why that unfolded, unfolded, but... They've been selling tech forever. Look at these last like 20 candles. You notice how they're closing at the lows of the day, like pretty much every day. Nobody's wanting to hold tech for weeks, for weeks. This is not some new uh, development. Like, oh my God, nobody wants tech stocks. They haven't wanted them in weeks. And so that doesn't mean Apple's junk. It doesn't mean Microsoft's junk. It doesn't mean Amazon's junk. Yeah, Tesla's still junk, That that's for sure. But it doesn't mean anything other than they've been wanting to sell tech for a long time. And look, without tech, we don't have a market. You look at 2022, uh, oil stocks went up, the defensive one went up, but the S&P didn't. So unless you think big tech is just done making money, uh, the recession is here, everyone's going homeless, you buy the 200 day and we're like a dollar off of it right now. Uh, so, I mean, there's not much to say. You can set a really tight stop loss below the 200 day. I, I don't know where the 200 day is gonna be this morning when we open, but it's gonna slope up a little more. And um, yeah, I mean, that's all you can do. You, you stop on a close below the 200 day, but your risk is defined. If you go long at the 200 day, you are uh, making a very calculated bet. And my guess, is we probably uh, base around the 200 day and move back up. But let's say we don't, uh, you just close right below. So you're risking basically like a dollar. That's all you're risking, right? Like if you go along at 430, 51 right now and you close below 429, whatever we open at this morning, that, that's your risk. And so that's a really great risk reward. Um, these things suck but they're part of markets, they happen, and they happen constantly. That's why, you know, if you wanna sleep at night, you can buy real estate, but you're gonna get significantly worse returns. But, you know, these, these dips happen, and the most important thing is understanding when they're going to happen, so you can sell calls, or you can buy puts, or you can do whatever. And uh, someone tweeted at me yesterday that the, the 21 EMA rule saved them like 30%, just because you know they use leverage and that, that's the big thing. You can lever all you want in an uptrend because you're never gonna go from an uptrend to a crash. It's, it's just never gonna happen um, overnight. You're, you're always gonna see the uptrend break and you're always gonna have time to remove your leverage and get out of it. And I wrote that long post you know, a few months back. You can see it on my subject. Literally every crash in history, um, and I showed like the last three or four, an uptrend breaks. That's it. This, this, this really is not that complex. And this was just one more uptrend that broke. And what came after was what came after. But I'm willing to bet we hold the 200 day because again, the fate of humanity depends on tech stocks going up. Uh, people are panicking right now. Uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to see it in the economic data, right? Like stocks are down. People aren't going to buy a car. They're not going to go on a trip. You're, you're going to see it slowly. Like, all we have in the United States is capital gains. And uh, as long as stocks stay up, people do stuff recklessly, they'll take a trip, they'll, they'll put something on their credit card, they'll, they'll finance a car, they'll do whatever. And 
as tech stocks come down, people stop, and that's when uh, the wealth effect really kicks in. So that's why we've saved stocks pretty much every uh, dip we've had for the last 15 years, and that's why we'll save them forever because without tech stocks going up, we pretty much don't have an economy here. So things will be okay. Uh, rough move down. See, the thing is the moves down are so violent. That's that's what's so violent, right? Tech is down, what, like 15% in a couple weeks? That's just how it goes. Um, if they don't get stocks back up, uh, Kamala Harris pretty much has no prayer. Because, right, Donald Trump, you know that guy. You know exactly how he's going to come out swinging. He's going to say, oh, the stock market crash is all because of Democrats. When, you know, a couple weeks ago, he was the guy saying, like, oh, stocks are up because uh, I'm leading. So he stocks are a major talking point for many Americans, their 401ks and whatnot. And if they're going into the election not feeling wealthy, it's going to bode very, very poorly for Democrats uh, heading to the polls. So I would expect we still go up probably near highs by the election. That's uh, three months away. So we have plenty of time. And... Today at the 200 day, my guess is the low. If we break that, then we've got major, major issues. But like I said, solid risk reward buying here and uh, closing on a close below that. All right. So that's my take on the crash this morning. It's nothing egregious. It's just a basic move down to the 200 day. Uh, people on Twitter are just like full of drama. They have no idea what they're talking about. And probably going to be okay. Um, you know, he again, you look at the companies, they just all posted earnings. I, I didn't see anything crazy. Even Amazon, which is like the one that doesn't make money, made $14 billion in Q2, which is like not even an important quarter. So, um, yeah, just textbook move down, nothing crazy. We'll see what happens today in the market. All right. So, use the 200 day as your bottom, and you will be okay. All right. On a close. Don't worry if it moves below it and then closes above it. Worry about a close below here, all right? Anyways, I will see you guys later.